So I have gotten a few requests to review these earphones, uh, but I've not really managed to get my hands on them until now. Thank you so much to a friend and supporter of the channel, Wilson, for sending me your ZS10 Pros. Going into this review, I really didn't have very high expectations for these at all. But I'm very happy to say that these earphones have taught me a lesson in humility. So let's jump straight into the build of these. These earphones have a stainless steel machine cut faceplate at least on the outside and the inner housing is made out of a resin. The steel does seem to have picked up a few hairline scratches over the last year that they've been used but they still look way above their price range. These come with different stock cables. This specific cable can be bought separately and I think is a silver plated upgrade cable. If you look inside the earphone through the resin housing you can actually see the drivers within. These come with silicon ear tips small medium and large which which all sit relatively comfortably in your ear. But I would have preferred a slightly softer tip because they can feel a bit uncomfortable after longer listening sessions. Thankfully, you can get foam ear tips as well, which should be a lot more comfortable. The stainless steel face plates have very fine text written on it that says 10 hybrid technology, referring to the different kinds of drivers it's using. The resin has even finer text written on it that says stunning hi-fi configuration, which I also presume is referring to the driver setup. This cable, which I mentioned earlier, Earlier is an add-on and it's beautifully made. It's a braided cable which has a proprietary connector for the earphones and terminates to a 3.5mm standard headphone cable. There is what looks like a heat treated sleeve from the earphone termination which follows the cable further away so it takes the shape of your ear. It's very neatly done. I did hear a set of CCAs at the headphone connect event and swapped between the standard copper cable and the silver one and there was surprisingly a significant difference in the overall delivery of highs and mids. It did change its overall tonality which I presume this cable is doing to a certain extent. On a feature front, forget Bluetooth 5.2, wireless charging, battery life and even ANC. What you can get should you want them is a Bluetooth setup by adding a Bluetooth module either over the ear or a neckband. You'll have to swap out the cable for these to attach to the earphones. A microphone option is also available when you're buying these should you want a mic for calls or gaming. Their passive isolation works well especially since these are in-ear earphones. <laughs> So KZ Acoustics decided to go with five drivers for each earphone. That's one dynamic driver and two balanced armature drivers. If you're not sure what a BA driver is, these are tiny drivers that work on a moving reed rather than a cone. And this tech was used for hearing aids and has evolved to an extent where it's being implemented in higher res earphones. What are their advantages? They're much smaller than dynamic drivers, so can be fitted into much smaller spaces and consume lesser power than them as well. So the four BA drivers in these are tuned to handle the highs and the mids, and the dynamic driver handles the bass. A big plus point if you're a gamer and you're wanting to pick up these earphones, with the cable, there's practically no latency. What I mean by that is usually the human ear can pick up delays of 20 milliseconds or more. With a cable connection, it's going to be significantly less than that number. And another plus point with these is that they are really easy to drive because they've got a resistance of only 24 ohms. So even if you plug them into your phone or even a portable amp, they will drive them very easily. Now, when it comes to the volume of these, that depends entirely on what you're amping them with. If you have a portable amp or a desktop amp, they'll certainly boost the volume better and more than a phone's internal amp would. If you've got a good enough amp, these don't thin out at lower volumes. Depth isn't lost at low output. It still manages to maintain a rounded delivery. Now, soundstage on any earphones is restricted, especially if they're a set of TWS earphones. But these, these tell a slightly different story. These do form a little bubble of stage in your head, but that bubble tends to spill slightly outside of the earphones, and these do have a slight vertical stage as well. The track that pointed this out in detail was Journeys Faithfully. At the 1 minute and 28 second mark, the drums kick in from the left channel and find their way across to the right channel and give the illusion of coming from slightly higher above my eyebrow line, then eventually settle in the phantom channel. I didn't experience this with a YouTube video which I will link down below, I experienced this with a DSD file. So clearly your source will matter a great deal with these earphones. High frequencies are slightly boosted but they do stay away from being fatiguing. Considering these are as good as they are with their imaging, one would think that having boosted highs, they'd be a bit piercing. 
but they stay clear from that. Longer listening sessions don't cause any fatigue. I feel more fatigued with wearing them for longer because I've never really found any in-ears very comfortable. These manage to stay away from sounding sibilant unless the recording you're listening to has a shrill recording, but it still manages to make those tones a little easier on the ear. Listening to Dave Matthews' band's Crash Into Me, the soft cymbal hits in the intro could be a little more present. I would prefer a richer, tighter tone, but considering how these handle their highs at their price point, I don't really want to complain because they seem just right. The upper mids do sound slightly boosted, but they have tuned this range very delicately. Vocals and instruments come at you in terrific detail, but sound like the lower mid-range is recessed in comparison, making male vocals sound thinner than I'd like. This is possibly happening because they've tuned the 4 BA drivers to handle highs and mids, and the lower frequencies carry on over to the dynamic driver. This handover is not always easily achieved with some audio devices. Not that these do badly, they are well-tuned and balanced here for what they are. Acoustic instruments sound true to their timber and can leave you hearing tones or riffs you haven't heard before in some recordings, especially if you're coming to these from a budget set of TWS earphones. Listening to Say Something by Justin Timberlake featuring Chris Stapleton, both voices sit very distinctly and don't merge into one another like they would with most earphones in this price range. They stand independent of each other and only enhance your listening experience because of how well you're able to hear their voices harmonize. Low frequencies are slightly boosted, but they do have a control to them that you can't expect from some earphones I've reviewed in the past. This is possible possibly the case because this one's dynamic driver is a specialist for one job and that's just low frequencies. It's not quite a bass enthusiast's dream come true because the bass delivery can be a bit picky with how it comes at you. It depends entirely on how good or bad the recording you're listening to is. With higher res audio, it's full bodied tight and composed. When you listen to compressed audio or bad recordings, the bass loses its enthusiasm and straight spine posture. I prefer listening to high-res audio, obviously. Cue Chris Jones performing long after you're gone. When the bass guitar kicks in, it forms a cocoon around you that pulls you into this moment of audio bliss. These ZS10 Pros want to take you into the hi-fi world by teasing you with better sounding everything as long as you've got a good source file. So these earphones aren't really that transparent. They are very slightly where you can tell the difference between a compressed audio recording and a higher res one. So it's easy to differentiate between the two, but they're not so transparent that you can't enjoy compressed audio. So uh, you can go ahead and listen to whatever you have on your phone. If you've got MP3s, it's not going to sound too bad. Uh, if these were really transparent, they'd call out every single issue you had with those recordings and it would just be unenjoyable. These manage to keep your audio listening enjoyable. It's very difficult for me to not like these earphones because they've, they've taken a few risks with a lot of things. Now, uh, there are a lot of companies who just get up and say, okay, we're going to do a dual driver and they cram in two dual drivers into those earphones and that can be really messy. So these guys have thought things through and they've put the one dynamic driver to handle the lower frequencies and four more BA drivers and which two handle the highs and two handle the lows as I've mentioned. So they've definitely put a lot of thought into this when it comes to tuning these. Uh, and I can honestly say the, the way they sound at their price is really unbelievable. It's I really can't fathom that you can get them for as much as they cost. So now having this kind of setup is a bit risky because BA drivers, well, I, I don't think they're too dependable, especially considering the price point here. I don't think they've really gotten the most expensive or uh, best put together BA drivers. Now there's no real guarantee that th this kind of earphone or these kind of drivers will last you five years or 10 years. The chance of these failing are very much there, whether it fails within the year that you have them in the warranty or it fails just a day after, there's no real knowing about it. So it is, there is a certain risk you, you have to uh, be willing to go through if you were to buy these. But the thing is the fact that this company has been willing to take this risk, uh, they're giving you an experience, they're giving you a tease really, where you can just touch the edge of getting into hi-fi and understand what that world is about. This is a terrific introductory set of earphones. If you're planning to get into the hobby, and perhaps think about sticking there. So when it comes to the price, uh, you can pick these up from headphonezone.in and uh, the MRP is at about 4999. But uh, right now, at the time of shooting this, they're being sold for about $43.99, but their price will keep fluctuating, I'm sure. So you might just get a good deal on it at some point, at least better than what it is. So now I've obviously assessed these based on the price range that they sit in. Can you compare these to higher end uh, headphones and equipment? 
Absolutely not. Will these sound better than a lot of TWS earphones that you have uh, in the same price range? Uh, that is again a very subjective thing to talk about. Now, I feel these are absolutely terrific when it comes to the sound. I don't think I've heard anything in the TWS range in this price range that handles audio the way these do. Those are more like your fancy cars with every single feature. You've got your sunroof, you've got your uh, air conditioning and everything. Whereas the, the KZ Acoustics are more like a fine-tuned uh, racetrack car, in, at least in this price category. They, they cater towards different crowds. They do two different things differently. I mean, the fact that you can get these earphones without a microphone, without ANC, without ENC, say, says very clearly that these are targeted at sound and sound alone. So yeah, if you are thinking about getting these set of earphones to get into the hobby or just try it out and you've got a few extra bucks to just try these, I definitely recommend these earphones to you any day of the week. So I do hope this review has helped you in some way or the other. And uh, thank you again, Wilson, for sending me your earphones. Uh, it's support like this that keeps the channel going. And of course, if you've stayed this long, uh, you know exactly how to support the channel. And of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.